Welcome to another segment of Credit Matters TV. My name is David Tesher and I'm a Managing Director in the Corporate Ratings Group. Joining me today is Cindy Werneth, a director from our Chemicals Rating Practice. Today, Cindy will briefly discuss our recently updated rating profile for Eastman Chemical Company. With that, let's just jump right into the questions. Eastman Chemical recently just basically announced an acquisition with Solutia. Please tell me the implications. How did we end up keeping our triple B rating based on this potential acquisition? Thank you, David. Um, well, a lot of factors go into that. First of all, Eastman's ratios had been somewhat stronger than necessary at the current ratings uh, heading into the transaction, and that's even if you disregard the significant amount of cash that they have on the balance sheet. So as of year end 2011, Eastman had nearly 800 million of cash. Of that amount, they expect to use about 600 million combined cash from Eastman and Solutia to, to uh, consummate the transaction. In addition, their, um, the transaction price contemplates a significant equity portion at the current share price. That's about $700 million. So another important consideration is the strengthening of Eastman's business risk profile with this transaction. First of all, Solutia has higher and more stable operating margins. We think that it will accelerate Eastman's penetration into important growing markets such as China. It brings a number of complementary technologies. It also improves manufacturing site, product, and market diversity. Frankly, one of the issues that we've had with Eastman so far to date before the transaction was its heavy reliance on its Kingsport, Tennessee flagship manufacturing facility. So Eastman has been improving its diversity. It acquired Sterling Chemicals last year. This will be another very important step in improving the company's diversity. In addition, Solution is also somewhat less capital intensive. So overall, um, in our view, it moves Eastman's business risk profile from what we consider to be satisfactory to what we consider to be strong. So what it can do is tolerate somewhat weaker financial metrics at the triple B rating. So that's great. So what you're saying to me is that we have reaffirmed our rating based on the fact that you think one, even though a large amount of the debt um, that's going to be financing this transaction is significant and you're thinking that the company now is expanding its operations. Exactly right. One other important consideration would be Eastman's track record with respect to financial policy. We think that they will maintain a moderate financial policy. We think that they will take the steps necessary to maintain the triple B rating following this transaction. So you think that once this transaction is fully transitioned and integrated that the financial profile of the company will be stable? Exactly right. Uh, what this does initially is increase leverage to, in our metrics, about three and a half times. Now we take, we consider um, post-retirement liabilities and now the environmental liabilities that Solutia is bringing to the transaction. Also capitalized operating leases at both companies, we consider those debt-like. So we get to about a 3.5 times debt to EBITDA ratio pro forma. Uh, we think within two years of the transaction, Eastman will be able to bring that down uh, with debt reduction to about three times. Also then, they'll be at the lower end of the uh, 25 to 30 percent FFO to debt range that we think is appropriate for them, given the b improved business risk profile at the triple B rating. So great. We're seeing a stable triple B rating um, for the immediate future. One other question that I have and I would like you to expand on is that there seems to be some more M&A activity in, this, in the chemical space. The question I have for you is that what has that impact, how has that impacted the effective credit quality of some of the companies you follow? Good question. Um, you're right, we have seen a flurry of activity um, on the M&A front in chemicals. We have Westlake pursuing Georgia Gulf, Fuller is acquiring the industrial adhesives business of Forbo, Ecolab recently acquired Nalco. Earlier in 2011 we had Sealed Air purchasing Diversi, uh, Ashland buying ISP and DuPont buying Danisco and it's, it's had a number of different impacts on those ratings of those companies. Um, in some cases, similar to the Eastman situation, the acquirer has been able to hold on to the existing rating. That was mostly, uh, most notably the case um, in the situation of DuPont acquiring Danisco. Uh, Fuller is also holding on to its triple B rating in connection with its uh, um, announced acquisition, although there we've changed the outlook to negative to uh, imply somewhat higher risk. Um, in, in other situations, the ratings have gone down. Ashland and Seal there each declined one notch to double B, and Ecolab dropped two notches uh, to triple B plus. And there, in the situation of Ecolab, similar to Eastman, it, uh, the, the transaction resulted in a category improvement in the business risk profile, but there the debt was significant enough to, to drop the rating by two notches. Do you see more M&A activity on the horizon? 
Yes, as I said, uh, you know, Westlake is pursuing uh, Georgia Gulf, that transaction. Uh, you know, we're waiting further details on that one. I think it's quite possible that we could see additional um, transactions. A lot of the companies in the sector are in reasonably good financial shape. Uh, we still have a low interest rate environment that makes the acquisitions, uh, you know, the, the math of the acquisitions work better for the acquirer. So, yes, I think we could potentially see additional. Thank you again, Cindy, for your insights. I want to thank you all for joining us for another segment of Credit Matters TV. My name is David Tesher. We'll see you again soon.